of Bailey Unicorn in Seville. We're going to take you around the van and show you how it operates. The hitch up procedure will go through in person here on site. So that's the jockey wheel, the handbrake, uh, and the hitch itself, and the connection to the car. Side of the van, you've got your wind down legs on either side at the front to stabilize the caravan. You've then got your water pump connection, which very simply pushes into the side of the van, as you can see, and pulls out. So push in and pull out. All the heating flue for the uh, gas systems for the heating and hot water systems. You've then got your motor mover, which we'll demonstrate here on site in person. You've got your wheel nuts, um, which we'll talk again while you're here on site, and we'll uh, do them to the correct manufacturer settings. And then you've got your mains power lead that comes into the side of the van also, um, and that very simply connects just inside there. So you've got mains coming to the van itself. And then you've got your two fridge vents. So the two fridge vents are essentially allowed to allow hot air out the back of the fridge unit and also behind one of them there is a gas flue uh, for the gas operation of the fridge also. Then got your toilet flush tank, so you undo the, undo the cap here. You put three and a half litres of water in here and a cap full of the pink fluid prior to use. And then in the bottom you've got your toilet waste cassette which you pull out while pulling up the orange handle. Pull the cassette towards you. The neck here will turn out and you tip the waste through the cap here. And then you've got an orange pressure relief button on the back so when you are tipping the waste away, it doesn't spit and splatter back at you. The wind down legs on the caravan, I think I mentioned it at the start of the video, but the wind down legs are essentially there to stabilize the caravan and not lift the caravan. If you lift the caravan with these legs, it could potentially damage the floor of the van. On the door side, you've got a three pin socket, storage room underneath the front seating area and a barbecue gas point. Behind the door, you've got your gas locker where your two six kilogram propane bottle. gas bottles go if you have them. On the inside of the van now. So when you first come into the caravan, you're gonna to need to turn on the mains power for the van. Next week you've got your water pump. Down bottom, you've got your internal lighting. So as you can see, you want to turn that on and off. Internal lighting comes on and off. And then you've got your exterior awning light on the switch next to it. Up above here, you've got the battery voltmeter. So as you can see, it's coming up 13.6 volts. Um, and the battery locker is actually underneath the carpet inside of the van. So the first thing you're going to need to do is, is fill the water system up. And underneath the seat on the right-hand side front of the van. At the back of the tank, just here somewhere, just there in the corner, sorry I can't quite, there we go. That yellow valve you see there is the drain down valve for the water system. So that valve when it's parallel with the floor will allow you to fill the water system on board the caravan. And if it's pointing upright towards the bottom of the seat, it'll actually drain all the water out of the system straight back onto the floor. So to fill it, like I said, you need it parallel with the floor in the position it is in the video. At that point, you come over to every tap on board the caravan, open them all up on the hot side, which as you can see I've already done, you'll open all on the hot side, so that's a tap in the kitchen, tap in the bathroom and the tap on in the shower room also. You'll then come to the control panel by the door with your aqua roll connector on the outside, or water pump connector on the outside and you'll turn on the water pump run. Now when I turn it, open each tap up, this light will turn yellow to tell me the water pump is running as it should. So what will happen is the water system will start drawing water out from the aqua roll and eventually you'll get water coming out of every tap as we have now. Once you've got water running consistently out of every tap, you can shut all the taps off and you'll be able to start thinking about warming your water on board the van. That's where this little control panel here comes in. This control panel here is essentially your heating and hot water control panel. So you press the power button just here. The control panel will come on. Once it's loaded, as you can see it is now, it's come on. Press the menu button and you'll be able to control the internal temperature of the caravan plus or minus, depending on where you want the temperature to be. This will go all the way up to 30 degrees and it is a real 30 degrees rather than a slightly warm air if that makes sense it is actually proper 30 degree temperature below that just here you have your water temperature so you've got water off when this bar is empty you've got water on when it's halfway up and then when it's all the way up to the top here it's actually on water boost for when you're showering on board the van at the bottom here 
you've actually got your power that's coming in to supply the heating and hot water system. Now this is only relevant to the heating and hot water, like I said, it isn't relevant to any other power on the van. So you've either got the choice of one kilowatt, two kilowatts, or three kilowatts. Here on site, I'm gonna run it on two kilowatts today. Um, but depending on what site you're on, you'd have to set that to the relevant power supply coming into the caravan. Um, if When you get to the site essentially that you're going to, if you're asking the site office, they'll, walk, they'll talk you through what power supply you can run for that. Down the bottom here, if you want to run the heating and hot water on gas, you can do that by simply hitting the gas button just here. It will self-ignite the gas system on board the van as long as the gas is turned on. Um, if it doesn't ignite first time, what we advise you to do is, is make sure the gas bottle is turned on. Come over to the hob just here. Get the gas through to the hob because that is the last point on the gas system. So that is your heating and hot water main controls for it. In here you have got some options for setting the timer for the heating and hot water. Um, and you do that via reading the manual so that you can... Uh, walk yourself through it essentially because if I went through it in the video it would take me three to four hours to just explain how that worked Now you may wonder why I'm showing you a microwave pretty self-explanatory to use I think we can all use one however this particular microwave and in all of these caravans They are eco microwaves so as you can see here to wake up press eco so you press the eco button here Microwave will wake up then it'd operate in a normal way of a normal microwave, but I'm just going to show you it's working so as you can see, it has come on as you'd expect it to. Cooker, hob and grill, again, very much the same as your household. The 240 ring at the back, the electric ring, will only work when you have 240 mains coming into the caravan. That will not work off a 12 volt supply. Igniters on the front and gas controls across the front. Fridge, again, very simple to use. On the left hand side here, you have a control to control whether you're using mains power, 12 volt or gas as a power source of the fridge. So 12, a 240 volt, very simple, you spin it around to the plug symbol, control the temperature on the dial on the right hand side. As this line gets thicker, essentially the fridge will get colder. 12 volt mode just here is actually from the 12 volt, car, a 12 volt power source from the car you are towing with. It is a not the 12 volt battery on board the van, which is a common misconception. So essentially when you connect to the car and you wanna get the beers and wine nice and cold before you get to site, you'll connect to the car first, come in here, turn it around to the, the battery symbol. You won't need to touch the temperature control because it is just a cool box, but the beers and wine will be nice and cold when you get on site. Gas mode, spin the dial to the bottom towards the uh, line here with the gas symbol next to it. You'll press in the temperature control and hit the igniter button on the right hand side at the same time. Once it's ignited on gas, you'll actually notice this little red line in this window here will come around into the green. And if it stays in the green, that means the fridge has completely ignited. On gas, you can control the temperature of the fridge on the dial on the right hand side again. However, once this red line has hit the green, you do need to make sure you're holding the temperature valve for a further five to 10 seconds before you release it. The idea is when you've got the temperature valve in, it lets, it lets through a little bit more gas flow to allow the thermocouple to warm up. Then once it has warmed up after five to 10 seconds, as I said, you can slowly release that valve. Control the temperature on the dial, the same as the electric. If you do want to isolate any of the power to the microwave or um, fridge, just in this cupboard here, oh no, sorry on that, we haven't. Up in the top, sorry, of the cupboard, above the microwave, you'll actually see there is a plug socket. That is for the power for the microwave. And then below the fridge, you should have the main consumer unit, where you can also turn off the power for the fridge if you turned off the sockets. That would isolate the power to the fridge and the other appliances around it. In the cupboard, underneath the uh, cooker you have actually got your gas valve so you've got your barbecue gas point shut off valve your hot water gas shut off valve your cooker hot um, gas shut off valve and your fridge gas shut off valve at the top here last thing we're going to go through on board this particular van is the toilet system in the bathroom very simple to use electric flush on top of the toilet 
toilet waste flap that you push open to allow the toilet waste to go in the cassette underneath the van. And the toilet seat does turn for your convenience to allow the toilet uh, to allow you to get comfortable on the toilet essentially. What you've also got on top of the toilet is a full indicator light. Now this light will appear red when the toilet waste cassette is completely full. Um, they don't always come on, so I do advise just checking because the magnet on the cassette itself can actually fall off. But in theory, that light should come on red when the toilet waste cassette is full. If you have any further questions on the Bailey Unicorn Seville, please don't hesitate to give me a, or give us a call here at the Caravan Company, and we'd be more than happy to help. We thank you for your business, and we look forward to seeing you here on site soon. But for now, bye bye.